Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and uh, share your video. Hey, Lata, a little background about um, Prabhu. Prabhu comes from a bit plani background, and uh, he is uh, he was a lead engineer in our group. Developed many mul multiple systems. He was like the one man show for many products. So a lot of experience and uh, very committed to whatever he takes. So I mean, he's glad. I'm glad that he signed up to help us out. Uh, so I mean, that's about it. But uh, pretty pretty sharp guy. And he's done multiple, he's developed multiple systems at multiple clients. So he comes with a lot of experience in various levels. So just a background about him. Yeah. So I'm currently working for Ford Motor Ford only. So I'm working in the EV space uh, right now. So I have like 15 years of experience in the industry. But um, throughout my career, I like went through different architecture platforms, um, not only Java. Um, so. But recently, yeah, cloud native solutions and with Spring Boot backend. And I have like 30 to 40% of Angular development experience. So, yeah, that's full stack mostly. Okay, so that's about me. So basically, I just wanted to come up with the introduction. So uh, when you go for the interview, so we are just going to focus only as part of the interview. How we are going to survive once you get a job that up to you like how the learning curve learning curves that you have that depends on you but to crack the interview is what my focus is going to be so to, once you once you prepare towards cracking the interview so you'll be comfortable doing the work uh, but technically you might face challenges like you may not be able to write i mean um, um if you are good with java completely java skill set then it's good you don't have you would not have any problem because entire code base is going to be java it's just we need to know all the frameworks where to use when to use that's it so that's all, all about um, uh, this particular architecture, right? So when people ask for a microservice developer background, they ask for everything. So it's a complete tool suite you need to know. Basically, they last the entire uh, uh, entire ecosystem. You should be knowing it. So that's the that's the uh, focus they're going to have it with. So Atlas two cloud platform. Atlas, you mean you, you should be aware of hybrid platforms. Like you have, let's say Home Depot. Home Depot is a company. If you are going to give an interview, they last for a they last for a hybrid type of solutions. We have on-prem data center. We have a Google Cloud solution also. How are you go, How are you going to deploy the service between different data different uh, platforms? So this is kind of an architecture they will look they'll expect from you. As even when you when you as soon as you put your resume. There'll be hundreds of calls will come to you, but automatically they'll they'll filter out based on your um, knowledge and all these areas. So that's why in high level, as a microservice developer, watch what you should know is what I have drafted here. Okay, so microservice architecture that's a major uh, platform that is uh, that is hot in the market. So everybody will look for you are a Java developer doesn't matter whether you whether you are a Java developer or not doesn't matter. But do you know microservice? So that's the first step they'll they'll go for. So so being a microservice developer, what you should know. So it's what all of what they will ask about. So I have basically come up with three different microservice. Okay. So microservice like product service, order service, and customer service. This is like an e-commerce platform. Let's consider it as e e-commerce platform. So for an organization, you are building a microservice backend. So then you might have you might inter interact with multiple services. Here I have just three, but there are companies where they are using hundreds of services within the same within their team so you might encounter all this um, all this uh, when you really get into a, a real time uh, work so that is that's why i just came up with one good architecture where it talks about authentication and authorization how it is handled okay gateway then you have multiple microservices how it communicates with each other and where do you deploy where do you push your code version controller okay then your pipeline building and PCF under PCF, PCF is one of the best platform for Spring Boot because uh, the same team basically developed Spring Boot and PCF. So Pivotal is the VMware is the one they they really developed both of them. So they pretty much know and the architect or design the solution as a platform. Like PCF is a platform as service, right? So you don't need to worry about the infrastructure behind the scene. You just give a platform. You deploy anything you want. You can deploy a Spring Boot application, you can deploy um, um, Angular based application, doesn't matter. So they give you a platform, your runtime, everything you will install through your pipeline. You will have everything um, for everything as a platform, run it as an instance. So, so we are going to discuss 
all this architecture okay so this will give you a complete guidance when the interviewer asks okay so have you used um, uh, they'll just basically ask like what kind of deployment platform you have used so you should be well versed it, it doesn't matter whether you have the real time experience or hands on experience doesn't matter but you should be able to answer it in a such a way that you know it okay so that's the focus we can have it so as part of the pcf how would you basically uh, do, do you know what is eureka service discovery why would you use it and in local the hands on what we are going to do not today so this is just introduction class what i want to cover is today for an hour i want to show all the architecture infrastructure that we are going to cover and um, how we are going to approach in the upcoming uh, sessions okay uh, any any questions so far okay so that's good so um so one one thing is microservice architecture like i said so we will cover uh, we'll write three different microservices actually in in our as a hands on okay so that's important so most of the time we won't be writing anything everything um, in the session what i would like to do is um you take the lead uh, basically as a resource so just keep keep learning so for you i'm going to show you the techniques where you can basically download a project how you set up and all this stuff and you can just start from there uh what my what i'm going to every session what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up with the interview questions so what kind of interview questions they can ask you so mainly they they will go in detail so if you answer one question they'll go into the next level they go deeper and deeper until you say i don't know so that's the level of interview will be usually for a microsoft developer at one point you might say no but it's not a problem so you, it's okay so um so until then they'll basically grind you so that's that's a goal so until you answer all the questions so you you are you, you're going to prepare towards that approach okay so even if you don't know if you say like um, you didn't know the answer and you don't get fed up with the interviews it's okay for the first few interviews to screw up so uh, that's my advice so don't ever worry about it so you will one at after certain um, iterations you will definitely go through it okay so this is about microservice architecture i just wanted to give a complete overview uh, about uh, what we are going to do uh, in microservice architecture hands on okay okay i have and, a question yeah so this architecture that you're defining here is uh, very specific to the pcf environment right mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. it only gives us uh, one i can use this as a blueprint to, to develop a complete microservice on a pcf environment Mm -hmm. but i can also use this as an abstract concept for other uh, platforms like uh, if i'm doing it on aws or if i'm doing it on gcp i can mm -hmm. still use this as a kind of a blueprint where i have to go and still do the shopping cart kind of thing where i have to map what is the equivalent of redis in um, gcp or in uh, aws see if there are alternatives for redis or if the redis is offered as a service this is this shopping i have to do if i change it from pcf to other cloud providers is that correct it is it is so let's say uh, i'm going to change this architecture okay up to here okay so everything that i select here okay it's all same what you do is you can replace the bottom section with the docker you can replace the bottom section with cloud run you can replace it with gke in gcp and you can do it with elastic beanstalk okay so with aws you can create a complete deployment tool suites based on your requirement so you may not go to a company uh, to work for uh, you may not go to a company uh, they use the aws then you just say i know only pcf they're not going to reject you they just say that what is your understanding towards this architecture okay so that's what they would basically go for so you oh, can no replace it with anything but spring boot is a common platform for a microservice one more question at some point are we since you're already gcp certified mm -hmm. uh, are we going to do a blueprint for the uh, whole thing whole stack for gcp also like uh, like gcp what would be the equivalent like are we going to go docker or are we not going to even go the gcp route or just stick with pcf and so let me ask this uh, sai so this pcf right this pcf is a product of pivotal right uh, what if i take this pcf and put it in gcp can i do it uh yes, yes that's what ford has done that right i mean uh, other yes. clients have done this yes so there is a reason for it so uh, let's say gcp is your vendor today but uh, they are started charging you more then you might go for a different different um, vendor 
like AWS or okay, some okay. Vendor, like Oracle comes into picture. They are providing cheapest cost. So there are companies, they don't want to go really 100% cloud native. That is one way. So cloud native, you want to go because maybe they are providing cheaper price. But uh, you see, like I said, you can use the PCF as a platform and put it in some cluster. You buy it from uh, Google, use it. That's it. So the reason why PCF is really good for a microservice architecture, they give inbuilt tools like config server. They give Eureka service discovery. It's all uh, nat uh, naturally comes from their tool suite. So that's PCF. Okay, but you but again, it's too too much of cost. Let's say if you think it's too much of cost, okay, let's use App Engine from GCP. You you can do it. So App Engine is another uh, pass uh, platform as service. You can use it. So. It's okay. I mean, there is no restrictions at all. So we can redesign the whole thing up uh, after this point of this point of PCF PCF step. You can just use it. Like you can deploy it anyway. So are we going to cover that uh, as a part of these discussions? And, uh, yeah, we can keep it keep it as a, um, a start last portion of which okay. like for multi multi cloud environment we can talk about it. Yes. Okay. But our focus primarily would be uh, the probably like uh, how to see how the uh, you request how to expose service as a gateway API through API gateway how to expose service from the front end point of view, then do yes. all the G CRUD operations how you can do it through JP JPA, and okay. then how this all do uh, how we deploy this code with the help of GitHub Jenkins into the environment, three yes. three levels uh, API yes. API gateway. Uh, the service uh, development and uh, integration with uh, Hibernate and then mm -hmm. deployment to the actual uh, layer, uh, layer yeah. of uh, infrastructure. These three things we'll be primarily focusing on. Right? Yeah. yeah. The high level. Okay. Yeah. So uh, actually one other point that I want to highlight here is, so when you go for an interview, right? So the problem is nobody uh, personally develop an API gateway, right? So API gateway is for an organization. So develop their own gateway or develop their authentication mechanism like ADFS is for food, right? So like likewise, they might use something else like OAuth to server. They might build their own organization level servers and stuff. They will build their own tool suite. So that's when they'll test as a developer, um, how did you handle it? It's what they'll test it for. So we should be able to say that we used ADFS server for authentication or we used a Azure for authentication, or we used GCP for authentication. Uh, so we should be able to answer it. So in such a way that so you they know that okay you are hundred percent well versed in this area. So that's what my my I'm trying to say. So this is if you develop API gateway in local, that's not really going to help your interview. That there's no point in doing it. So we should come up with story to explain it. So we may not have we, you may not you might not have done this, but you should come up with the story to just talk through that problem. Like how you can handle it. How, given a situation like OAuth 2, how do you rewrite your code, a web security class in your Spring Boot microservice? How do you um, authenticate it? So that's that's a major um, uh, part they'll test it. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. These, these, these below parts are pretty easy. Like um, how you connect to a database, simple. Nothing to do with the Spring, when Spring Boot is there, you really write no, I mean, literally write zero code for that. Everything is auto configured. You just add the dependency that will auto configure. What you write is just a JP interface. That's it. Interface will provide abstract implementation. I mean, abstract inter abstract methods that will internally write the implementation also. So you really do zero code for that. So that's what my understand. My my point is. But how do you communicate with service to service? How do you use resiliency? How do you build a resiliency on your project, on your microservice? Um, if a service is down, how are you going to handle it? So these are all the little things we need to talk about. Okay. So when as, as part of the, as if you are preparing towards the interview, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, under PCF, these five other, my other services, uh, inbuilt services are provided uh, services that we need to talk about. What is the purpose of config server? why we use a Eureka service discovery, what is Redis is doing here, RabbitMQ, what is this Splunk logging, so all this, okay? And uh, I would I would even think about one more thing, uh, like I just wanted to, it came into my mind, so let's, let's do this. 
observability and performance monitoring. This is one of the implement uh, one of the qu question they ask. So, what is observability? How are you going to manage the production? Your your organization head they want to see your uh, SLA. Okay, so how are you going? To, uh, how are you monitoring it? If there is any issue with your production application, how are you monitoring it? So that kind of uh, uh, stuff will come. So like I would put the tool uh, Grafana and Prometheus. So Prometheus is the time series database. Grafana is a visualization tool for the database. So how this is helping you from monitoring this observe your your metrics? How are you meeting it? So this is this kind of question will come really. That's the challenges uh, always come in, comes into picture. Okay, so if you are good, then I, I just would like to move forward with other things that we are going to yeah. talk through. Yeah, let's move forward, yeah. So Spring Boot. Um, so Spring Boot and Spring Cloud, uh, basically there are two different things. So Spring Boot, if you take it, it's basically a framework. The framework, what it gives you is, okay. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. So Spring Boot, what it's going to talk about is like it's a framework um uh, written on top of a Spring. A Spring is a oh, it's been a, a framework for for like quite quite some time. But technically, Spring Boot uh solved the problem of um certain things like bootstrapping, auto configuration, actuator, data JPA, batching, and Spring security. So they basically wrapped everything and kept it as a one framework called Spring Boot. It was developed by Pivotal again, so that they designed their deployment platform according to this actually. So that's that's one thing we are going to discuss in detail and every step uh, so that we are clear. So with, with all the questions they, they are going to ask and also this will be useful when you really work in the project. So when you when you are placed, you will be knowing all the stuff so that they you know everything. So. Uh, when you get into a project, you'll be able to easily solve these problems very quickly. And That's Spring a hundred percent question, right? Generally, it's a hundred percent question in the interviews. In this in this area, yes, like most of the people, yeah. First, interview. first question they'll ask is like, uh, what all does Spring pro Boot provide, and what all have you used? Yes. Like, what all components have you used, and why do you use Spring Boot? Minimum, yes. you have to be able to answer. Yes. Right. <laughs> So, and Spring Cloud. Spring Cloud is what they have come up with is as a cloud platform, right? So, we deploy everything in cloud, okay? So, there is a certain uh, certain factor that you need to follow uh, for an application to be cloud native, right? That is what 12-factor app, right? So, they call it as 12-factor app. So, you can search um, in Google what is a 12-factor app and just remember, I mean, Read through it. If you don't understand, it's okay. But I will explain all the all the twelve factor app. But memorize it. So for interview, that's one of the key thing that you need to know. But I'll explain what everything does and how it is used in a Spring native um, or cloud native um, so, uh, services. Okay, that I will talk have, through. Do you but, have notes? Do you have notes? I know you write very very good notes. Do you have notes on this? Uh, notes on what? Uh, cloud native. 12, uh, 12, 12 factor authentication. Whatever you're asking us to read, would you be able to send a screenshot of your notes or like uh, send my mail or whatever? I know you write very good notes. So you have no, do you know, have notes on things that you want us to read on? I have, I don't know. Let me let me do this one second. So if you go to this, right? So this is 12 factor app. So okay. as a Spring Boot developer, they should know we this. Are only we are only seeing you are still the sketch. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, one second. Let me share the whole screen. So here, if you look at this, yeah. So this is in Google. If you go type twelve factor app, a uh, twelve factor. This is a. Uh, if a service needs to be or any application needs to be deployed in cloud they have to follow this pattern, okay? So this 12, 12 features that needs to be followed. So when pivot, I'll talk through this in detail. This is just a small thing, so like you don't have to worry about it. It's not a, it's not a uh, rocket science. It's just a small little things that needs to remember, but you can just simply memorize it for now, okay? So you don't have to really worry about it. Uh, this, this again, why you need to memorize it without understanding, it's just a, 
exam question so i mean like exam question you they will ask you in general as an as, a, as an interviewer uh, if i were i were an interviewer i would just ask this simply whether you know it or not at least like out of 12 you know like five of them at least so it has to satisfy that so that's one thing so to do that spring came up with an idea that they that that a plural team came with an idea that they bundle everything as a cloud solutions instead of boot there is a two different things in in uh, spring they more some of the dependencies are root as a cloud and some of the dependencies as a spring boot framework so spring cloud anything that is talking to each other like you have two microservices talking to each other okay then it's 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 going to complain about resiliency it's going to complain about tracing how if you split one monolith to a microservice 100 microservices how it how are you going to manage it so you need some standard to manage it right so you cannot go and search every uh, microservice okay uh, this microservice communicated product microservice communicated with the customer microservice what happen in between how do you trace it right so api tracing zipkin and zilut so is going to handle it um i think i don't know why i duplicated this but and how are you going to caching solutions some of the queries you don't want to give latency to your customers how are you going to externalize your properties config server so you have 100 microservices each microservice will be assigned to an endpoint in pcf or anywhere even if you deploy it somewhere you have a domain for each microservice right i mean each, each microservice will have a ip address and port number so how each port number if let's say you delete a microservice container and then you recreate it then the ip address changes how are you going to deal with it so that is when service discovery comes into picture so all this little things will come into picture so uh you're talking from one microservice to another microservice what are all the resiliency factor that you can follow so these are other other side of the thing that we, we are going to talk about okay so i would even say that this is aspects some aspects so aspects is basically part of um um spring boot i mean spring framework but i'll talk to what is aspect how it is working uh i mean it's not going to be here actually it's going should be in the spring boot so anyway so i'll talk through all this uh, but in general this is what we are going to talk through in spring cloud do you have any question on this i think i got it okay and in java uh, i think since you are a java developer i think you should be knowing all this but technically the high level questions they they not go detail but um for a microservice architecture or a developer role um high level or uh, in details so you should be just knowing these these uh, these things string they'll go for it streams from java 8 we have streams so we should be doing streams oops functional interfaces mm -hmm. and lambda so lambda so you should be preparing towards this so we should be completely understanding the whole flow okay so this is very important for a for a developer to uh, track the interview for sure so there are few questions i'm going to give it an as an assignment you you basically practice it make sure that you understand that okay as part of streams they literally ask you to write a code in the interview making sure that you you understand stream so that's one thing Good. concurrency why we need a concurrency we are not going to write any thread class or runnable runnable interface or how you create a thread class no but they are going to ask a uh, concurrency in terms of how are you going to manage threads in spring spring boot in terms of um uh, executor right thread pool executor how it is going to work exception handling one of the other important thing that you might know as a java developer but there are few few questions tricky questions they can ask in uh, exception handling many java developer even experienced one will not know some of them so we are going to talk through them that's good data yeah, structure so there generally these days they'll ask about uh, how you can do exception handling with spring boot I and mean, if you say try catch finally and all that like uh, <laughs> yeah. Those, yeah those days are gone yeah yeah uh, <laughs> yeah data structures so data structure high level you should know but uh, um but they last like they'll start with array list what is the difference between array list and vector that is 10 year old question they are still asking but 
that's not just as just they'll test it they'll start with it whether you know it or not but then they later jump on to it what is a synchronized list nobody knows it so uh, so then uh, they'll go for um, weak hash map what is it concurrency hash map when would you use it so that kind of detail they'll go for they don't really need to know whether you can write it or any implementation but literally they'll ask it so why why what is a weak hash map when do you use it right so <clears throat> oops concept everybody knows it as a java developer but it's good to keep in keep good to uh, to be prepared to answer it. any any question they ask um a difference and stuff so they should i mean as a java developer we should know it and design patterns at least four it's good to know because singleton uh, builder strategy and orchestrator most of the time we use it single time nobody writes really in real time but if you they one of the interview uh, they asked like uh, can you write a singleton class so they literally ask you to write a code so yeah. be prepared for this singleton is a common thing that oh, everybody will okay. ask so let's be prepared right it's just one time we we remember it write it and practice it we are done we don't need to read it again that's my my principle of preparing for interview so there are a few things builder you don't need to write it but you should know how lumbok helps right lumbok or uh, records in java 17 right so so builder helps builder design pattern helps for the for this why we use it when do we use it so i'll talk through this the, when we write real code uh, we'll we'll talk through this okay design principle so this is very important solid is one of the main design principle um, but except lisco i still don't understand this when when i have used last time seriously i have never used this but all the other things i have used it so i can talk through this but I, as a developer we just should know that's it so it's not really an um, um, sorry man it huh? very, imp very important yeah generally important. They, uh, what i've noticed is uh, generally you'll get asked about if you're doing a code review what is it that you look for look and for uh, yes. what you look for is solid basically so yes. lit solid so this is what you have to look for and this is what they expect you to respond back yep that's very important so we'll talk through this and sql um so in my opinion sql uh, like like i showed in the, this architecture right if you had noticed i have used mongo here i have used mongo here but i have used postgres some things may use postgres like an rdbms type of system okay and some mongo when do you use it like um what is the purpose of using mongo versus uh, um uh, rdbms right no sql versus uh, rdbms so we need to understand the mechanism behind it so when you think about as it like a uh, uh, sql rdbms it has to be support i mean it has to be as it support um atomic concurrency uh, uh, uh dependency like um uh, so so there are four properties that we should be um uh, isolation and uh, uh, independent so all the transaction every transaction how we are going to manage it so this as a property is what they'll always ask for scaling how how do you scale a sql database actually there is no scaling for sql database except vertical scaling but recently they came up with something called read replicas so that is considered as horizontal scaling for sql server or um, oracle or any rdbms there are few queries write it memorize it be ready for writing this that four queries are like three queries are 100% record right delete duplicate records all type of joins so just write it keep it ready that's it mostly as a developer they'll ask only this much that's that's maximum nobody write ask it but in as in terms of interview they they'll go for it but it's pretty simple um, so i'll come up with the example so we will write some queries and make sure that we understand it if you have any questions so we can talk through it and other than that uh, based on sql what, what else you know they if they ask it's extra like extra additional um it added added weightage to your uh, skill set views triggers procedures you don't need to learn how to write procedures but you just need to know what is the procedure what is the trigger what is the view so that's it normal forms again old question but good to know as a, a developer in in case if you want to design a database so that's one one other thing so this is this much is enough for a sql right no sql very simple cap theorem you should know 
when do you choose mongo sorry when do you choose uh, mongo versus cassandra so now there are so many databases uh, uh, uh in the market but most of time people ask when do you use mongo what is mongo like mongo is basically a <clears throat> it's a document based database and cassandra cassandra is basically a ring based system so what is the difference between these two so they might ask right so what is the purpose of no sql horizontal scaling okay there are few other questions they can ask um how do you avoid um what is it called i forgot the one hot um i forgot the word actually yeah. Yeah. that that called um <laughs> i forgot the word actually so that's basically clustering right so when you're sharding so not sharding but um, when you do sharding uh, there are certain shards will become uh, huge if you don't choose a proper hashing technique so that's that we, we are going to talk through that so how are we going to handle that situation so there are very very limited thing on nosql they can ask but it's good to know this much that's enough for nosql and uh, rest api finally so what you should know http methods all of them http status code and controller controller advice what is it service layer repository layer any microservice you write we are going to follow this okay and in jpa uh, what are all the different options that you can query the database can you use jdbc what is the trans transactional annotation does what is the um, uh, scope of it jpa entity manager jdbc template name jdbc template there are few options that you can write the queries on okay yeah. any interview question they last how are you going to call a stored procedure from your jpa the last this question so we should be able to answer it like what what do you use a name jdbc template or a jdbc template which one do you use it i'm going to memorize memorize memori memori these right we yes, use it but we use it we just copy paste from somewhere and we forget it so usually yes. we we all write the code but we forget it like uh, even i have called stored procedure but i don't remember which one i used yes so so unless you read the real solution right you will not remember it so that's one thing and uh, auto wiring dependency injection it's all common thing uh, but uh, if you do not know just tell me anything that you are not comfortable with we can talk through about it more right so that you understand it um so you can perform well in the interview that's that's a goal so that's where we can go towards nice. so in my opinion these all this stuff is good enough so i will add one more thing here gcp uh since you have a gcp background i would say i'll i'll come up with some architecture overview uh in general so how we can build it so we can... okay so this is all uh, i would we we can we can go through during our process uh, okay i'll i'll stop the i'll stop the recording here i think this makes a good uh, video this is the uh -huh. introduction video about what we'll be covering about so yeah. i will stop the video here uh, do you have any questions uh, lata and uh, i think it is pretty very good uh, breakdown of how to be mentally prepared and feel like you are actually prepared and uh, even i couldn't come up with this kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, breakdown of all the topics and this is i think if you are prepared with these you can you can feel like you are armed for an interview yes you are pretty proper right. pro properly armed for the interview otherwise it looks like okay there is lot to learn and you not learn many can progress this breakdown is pretty i'm pretty confident anybody general interviews maybe not for fang like not for top tier fang companies but rest of them probably they should be more than enough yeah uh, yeah so any microservice development role we can crack this interview with we can crack the interview with this architecture because mm -hmm. trust me i just prepared uh, towards for my wife this is what i used uh, she prepared like 3 weeks she took um so she from think about it so she does have zero knowledge in java zero knowledge in spring spring boot and a platform like pcf or gcp but uh, she's well prepared now with this architecture so uh, this is this is why i thought like okay, uh, i'll discuss with sai so we can go from there um uh, consider it as a, anybody with zero knowledge on any of those topic they can crack the interview so this is the goal excellent prabhu so i think this is an excellent breakdown uh, so uh lata do you have any questions lata try to be uh, maybe uh, sujay and lata uh, if you're joining maybe plan to turn on your videos also and uh, ask questions 
that way it will be more fun and more interactive so yeah okay yeah this is yeah, this don't is say it's just me and yeah, sai so. from next time i'll be prepared to you know to be interactive for also, now i'm just uh, overwhelmed seeing all these topics because i'm is, only is good it... with the basics of java and because it's been 2 years and i don't know what we have used in our company lata don't worry about it so even if you have not used it at all right so don't be overwhelmed um uh, don't think that it's overwhelming uh it's because it's overwhelming because there are so many breakdowns and stuff don't worry about it it's really simple thing if you if you become a microsoft developer right literally we won't do this much of work actually they have simplified the task for the developers they have automated so many things it looks like that but technically it's not so that's why i put it as a pictorial representation so that i will share this with sai go ahead yeah. and um, go through this like once in a while every day just uh, spend few minutes you don't need to know what it is but i will when you do the coding right will will explain it in detail so my first thing if what you can do is first create a github repo okay uh, do a sign up and we'll create a service okay so use the service um, like simple simple services okay simple microservice we'll develop one config server we'll develop one when i say config server don't think that it's just so much of coding it's nothing i will go to spring initializer okay so what i am going to do is uh, in 2 minutes i will write on eureka service discovery okay what i'm going to do is spring initializer Hi. okay yeah. go from prabhu we'll break it down into more topics otherwise uh, yeah we'll... Yeah, I, I think we'll go through the details in the next video. Next uh, video, for sure. But I'm just saying, well, just to don't yeah. get scared of it. What I'm yeah, saying, yeah. it's just simple thing. Uh, you just go add a dependency, download it. That becomes your Eureka service story. So for a developer, there is not a overwhelming stuff. It's because we don't know, we are scared. That's it, literally. If you get to know, it's piece of cake for anybody. Yes, see, our uh, Prabhu, he's uh, doing circus with her daughter and uh, still managing to talk. <laughs> so that shows his level of expertise. So these kind of cute things, you know, if he's uh, just talking with us, we won't understand. That's why I asked him to turn on the camera. Now he's doing all the circus and also still talking. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, she's torturing me. <laughs> yeah, the bunny keeps uh, bunny. <laughs> bunny will keep her him very active. He keeps yeah. testing him. Only being a good developer is not good enough. Being a good dad, good dad, and a developer is the challenge. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Srija. I'm just saying. I just opened that uh, view. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll we'll interact. Uh, my my goal is if I can place one person, that would be a great honor for me. So that's what I'm 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 expecting. I, yeah, so I will add. Go. I will add by next week. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What What do you like? Hey, members uh, yeah yeah hey um sai uh, let's do one thing do you have any common um, repo github repo right i have repo um let's see um uh, thinking about a platform where i can save this kind of documentation i'll keep creating so many documents one not one not one not one not right okay yeah i'll not as one not as best yeah not as best uh, i have my company account i think you can you can use that uh, Why not? Is good. We can. Uh, that is the best place. Uh, Prabhu, see. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll stop the recording once again. I'll stop. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu, I'll stop the recording.